Fantastic. Al Oldfield's sitting to my left. How are you, mate? I'm pretty good, thanks, Tim. Al, fantastic. <laughs> Brad Gavin, directly opposite, looking fine. How are you, sir? Bon Jovi. Excellent. <laughs> Julian Sloney, we're in your pad. It's comfy. It's warm. There's a weird hum from an air conditioner. How are you doing? Uh, doing really well. Welcome to the library, gentlemen. You know, the most relaxing room in the house, of course. It's quite tranquil. Oh. I feel very posh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, here we are. So, last week, we uh, we managed to get through speed and, and the bombshell was dropped at yeah. the end of that episode by one Bradley over here yeah. who sought to take us back in time. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Here a, we are! <laughs> that's, that's definitely uh, yeah, going to be one of the you, I think we're going to talk about. And you, and you took us back to the year 1986 yeah. to watch a, uh, one of your old-time favourites, Highlander. Do you want to fill us a, in? Which is a great segue to History with Brad. <laughs> Brad, Brad, Brad. Okay, 86. Not as interesting as 94 because there was no Offspring Smash or uh, me finishing year 12. Um <laughs> Some just random stuff. The uh, Challenger build blew up. Um, oh, you just oh, random. Yeah, yeah. Way to drop it heavy first <laughs> up. <laughs> and uh, keeping on the space theme, the uh, Voyager 2 encountered Uranus. <laughs> I just had to put that in. Um, <clears throat> did that actually happen in 86 or is it just something? No, you... it did. <laughs> yeah. it, doesn't oh, ma- it doesn't matter when that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You always got to put a Uranus joke in there somewhere. Um, oh, no, back onto the movie things though. Pixar opened. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't realise Pixar were that old. Yeah, neither did I. Neither did I. Hey, look, we're, we're, I'm using Wikipedia here, so, you know. Uh, very reliable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could have added that two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good point. Um, what else happened in 86? Uh, Nintendo released Zelda. Uh, Chernobyl disaster. Wow. Ooh. And just to rub something into Timmy, uh, Montreal Canadiens <laughs> won the Stanley Cup. For the twenty third time, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, oh, we had we had won any by then. The uh, the Simpsons in eighty six as well was oh, really? uh, yeah when it was first uh, first developed. Wow. Uh, and uh, notable films from the year were Top Gun, Crocodile Ooh. Dundee, Platoon, Ooh. and Aliens. Wow, oh, great! Jeez, movie. not much happened in eighty six. Yeah, huh? not no. a lot. No, no nothing. Nothing of notable <laughs> anything really. Yeah. Can we do well, Aliens next? That is oh. such a good movie. Tell you what, in '86, oh. war must have been on people's minds with like, like a platoon and Top Gun and like. Well, Top Gun's probably other. down as one of the greatest Cold War propaganda films of all time. Yeah. Other than maybe Rocky IV. Haven't seen it. Couldn't agree or disagree. I'm with him. I'm another I'm, noob. I need to yeah. bolt you He's, down. You know what? I don't actually. I, I haven't seen any of the Rockies. Anymore. These children, no, Bradley. No, These children. children. They, they just haven't lived. They just no. seem. The Rockies just seem so unappealing. Though. They do. They do. Yeah. Thank just, you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's I'm, not I'm get gonna have to beat you up now. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, put it this way. You know, just going on to the younger generation. I had this uh, this young girl, a friend of my uh, wife, staying at her house, and she classed Robert De Niro as. That guy from Meet the Fockers. Oh, oh nice. No. And I went, oh my God. Oh, she's a keeper. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Anyway, moving on. Directed Highlander. Here we are. Highlander. Directed by Russell Mulcahy. Melbourne Boy. Ah, there we go. No way. Melbourne Boy. Wow. Also, had a big history in uh, uh, music video. Okay. Directed Video Kill the Radio Star, Ooh, nice. the first music film mm-hmm. clip yeah, on, on MTV. MTV. Yep. He also did Highlander 2, yeah. which... Yeah, well. <sighs> we can't blame him for that. I'm not sure we can They speak just about backed that. a truckload of money up. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. uh, he did one of the Resident Evil films, Ooh. one of the later ones, and he is currently directing Teen Wolf, the TV series. All right. Just Ooh. so you know. Okay. So he's yes. been employed. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's making the a dude's living. Dude's working. Good for him. You know, good on him. It's more than I can say for me. No, he's employed. That's great. Good on him. And and this is a pretty good film. Like, I don't know if it's the best film I've seen. I've seen Highlander several times as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm a fan. Definitely mm-hmm. a fan. And it had been a while mm-hmm. since I'd yeah. seen it. Mm. The opening is stunning. It is. Right? I, was, I actually mentioned that, that in the, my notes. I've got here the, that helicopter shot. Which, in 1986, there's, there probably actually was a helicopter in that room. Oh, yeah. There's so <laughs> much good stuff going right at us. So, first you get the Sean Connery yeah. voiceover. Yep. Explaining, you know... With an old school, like, actually written on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Mythical uh, tale. The internet tells me he recorded that in a bathroom and, like, sent it over the phone or something sure. ridiculous. Wow. 
Gives uh, it that good echo though. I remember super echo. Yeah, echo. yeah. I was actually disappointed that the fact that there was uh, that it was written on the uh, the screen. I reckon it would have been way better if it was just the voiceover. Cronin style. Nah, because yeah. nah, because it used to be what they did a heap. Mm. Like it happened in Transformers, <laughs> the movie, not the, t- the not the shit one, the good one. Yeah, the animated one. The animated one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, 1986. You forgot that. Oh, Whoa. I did. Yeah. Sorry. Ooh. Yeah. No. I did. That's, no, that's um, bad. but no, that was. I feel Stop like myself. I can't look. I can't think of more examples off the top of my head now. But mm. I'm sure, like that was a, a sort of thing. It was written on the screen, and then someone read it as well. Yeah. Well, but, I think um, with that though, straight away, yeah, it's like we are so in the eighties. Oh, we're, oh, we're at a you know, wrestling oh, yeah. ring. We're at Madison Square Gardens. My first, my, the first thing I wrote down was eighties in your fucking face. <laughs> yeah, pretty, much, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The the um, mu- like the music. <laughs> So Queen apparently came on quite late. Yeah, and did the entire soundtrack. Yeah. Because apparently they watched some scenes and got really inspired by it. Yeah? And then wrote a bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. But that opening, oh, like, here we are. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then that cut between the wrestling and and then I really like how it was cut with the flashbacks mm-hmm. as well. Like, you know, you sit there and you go, well, we're on the battlefield in like 1500s Scotland and we're at the wrestling in the 80s. Like... <laughs> It's a pretty. Yeah, yeah. I get the. I get the connection. It's just a it's trigger like, point. I think. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's saying that he's sitting there and he's watching this, and it's taking him back. To yeah, yeah, yeah. I just find it quite amusing that. And then he gets the, it's uh, wrestling. They're completely like, different. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> it's like really we're staged. We're not comparing. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah it's but a, he's sitting I, there, and then then all of a sudden he gets the like you know the the like the twitches the twitch and yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's someone here. Mm. And you know, down in the uh, into the car park, he goes. I mean, mm. I, f- I found it very odd that it was yeah. Like aside from a scene later on in the film where he he's in World War Two, uh, but it's either the very very past when he's with his you know his brothers and mm-hmm. or his cousins and stuff, mm. or it's the present. And but, yeah, like, but that's because gap in between. between. Yeah, very limited. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, that's because oh. he was still trying to figure out what he was. I think. So that would, that was integral to the story. Telling oh, ab- the story absolutely. of Absolutely. Well that was when he discovered he was immortal. Correct. Yes. Back then. But I really like that huge gap in the middle because you don't know anything about him. You mm. don't you can He's mysterious. Like for for the garbage that was Christopher Lambert. It's like <laughs> worst actor in the planet. But at the same time, at the same I'm glad time, someone else said it. Yeah. I didn't want to have to say it because I'm a noob to this. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, there was this. You could tell there was history in him. Yeah. But you didn't need to know it. You know, like you didn't need to go through. Like you could have easily made this film like the opening sequence of that bloody Wolverine film, which is fantastic. Yeah. It's the only decent part of it. But, you know, like him through every sort of major, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. major time thing. And the only reason, like jumping quite ahead, the only reason we went back to World War II was, was to explain that character. Was to explain Rachel. Oh, yeah, 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 what yeah, she exactly knew. Right. Which was, was great. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. yeah, like... And also, I, you know, he killed a Nazi. That was also yeah. important. Woo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of my notes <laughs> yeah. says, best line in the film, that one. <laughs> I'll find it. Really? Which, I'll which, find it later, yeah. Which, what? Oh, where the, where the Nazi stops him and says something. He's like, whatever you say, Jack, you're the master race. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, some weird sort of yeah. really messed up French accent. I suppose that the whole gap, though, can... can I guess there's there's subtleties to the, the props that are in the film because, like, in his house, he's got heaps of antiquities and things that he's collected over the years. So, I guess through the props and things it kind of says yeah look this guy's been doing a lot of shit yeah we just aren't showing it to you and that's that's I find that really smart filmmaking that's that's like a rich it's nice not to be told everything yeah you don't have to have it shoved down your throat like Mm -hmm. that happens a lot these days yeah everything has to be explained yeah Yeah. and it's a really nice way to just lay a backstory without cramming Mm -hmm. it down your throat Mm -hmm. it's I really love it you know and it's a really strong point of this whole film, so yep. let's 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 just cut it right back. So there's there's these immortals, right? Yep. And they're they're wandering around, but there's this. Look, I'm going to be asking a lot more questions than anything, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because I've only seen this once. So, Same. So you've got these immortals; they can sense each other, and these immortals are just born, yes. random. So there's no random generated, righto? So there's no there's no bloodline. Okay. Uh, are we are we uh, talking? Highlander 2 is canon here or are we ignoring 
Highlander 2. Well, we're, ign- we're definitely, we'll ignore okay. that. I haven't seen okay. Highlander 2. Highlander it doesn't 2. exist to me. We will so. ignore Highlander yeah, 2. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there are these random immortals, right? So there's no real, uh, you know, structure or anything to how they come about. They're just kind of born into this world or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they can sense each other and there's this, they need to, they, they feel that there can only be one. <laughs> Not to quote the film a hundred bloody times, but it's uh, it's called the gathering. Yeah, so you're just gonna have to explain this a bit to me. Well, I, wh- yeah, the the quickening is the thing that happens after they kill each other, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the quickening is never really explained. <laughs> that was a good. Yeah. I wish yeah. I wish we recorded that like like visually. That was great. Yeah. So the quickening is one of those things where it's never really explained. They kind of leave that also up to you. So to this decide. is once they so, kill another immortal. Yeah. This this process happens called the quickening. Yeah, but my theory, that's who I want to know is, do they get stronger? So that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, is yeah. it like Jet Li's The One? The One, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah, Where yeah. you kill yeah. one. Well, see, I've got a whole question towards the end about all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But why, I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> 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 like, clearly they don't feel they can coexist. Is it all about, is it all just power hungry? Like, is this just about power? Well, it seems to be that, you know, spoiler alert here. The whole thing spoilers, by the way. Oh, we're just gonna, we spoil we every film. Yeah, so. It should be called the spoiler alert. <laughs> we should. Um, so, you know, he's he gets to the end and he's killed everyone and he becomes mortal. See, uh, I kind of wish we spoke about this later in the, the podcast instead of just now. But oh, that's one of the questions I was going to ask was... Yeah. So maybe that's what Once they want. All... Maybe, maybe immortality isn't as great as all its... Yeah, see, that's, that's the whole point. And that's... that's the theme that I kind of gathered through mm. the whole thing yeah. was there's this real... Just I got it. Do you want to live <laughs> forever? <laughs> Bad, I love so- that, and it's like it's all quiet, but then it goes. When we will die. So, so Queen. While Queen's we're awesome. touching this subject, though, we've because we've brought it up. If immortality is not such a good thing, and you're fighting to become mortal, uh, so that you can you know die, why don't you just? Get your head cut off. Head, okay, head, so head that's head another thing off. to mention is that the only way you can kill one of these immortals is to chop their head off. Yeah, when the yeah. head becomes separate, separate from, from the, the body. <laughs> <laughs> that's right because they don't fully sever a guy's head. And yeah, all yeah. This, all this shit so comes Sean out, comes along it? and yeah, and uh, just like just slices him. Yeah, yeah. And, Makes uh, a yeah. Pez dispenser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he and he flips his head back on and right. yeah. heals himself. So. Because uh, uh, the one thing, so there's, so the bad character is, is um, what, oh, what's the actor's the name? Kurgan. Clancy, Clancy, Brown. The Kurgan. Kurgan. Clancy, Clancy, Clancy Brown. Brown. Yeah. Clancy Brown. So awesome bad guy too. He was great. Yeah, and, was, and I look, just yeah. got down here. So he's a bad guy. So, well, the sort of bad guy in Shawshank. He's the prison guard. Yes. Um, he's in Starship Troopers. He's the one that. This is the thing. first time I haven't seen him as, in like an officer role. Like oh, as you said. Oh my god, he's in Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's in. Buttloads and buttloads of animation. Yeah. Like he's the enemy it, cannot everything. push a button if you, you disable, disable his hand. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. He's uh, Mr. Krabs. Yeah, he's Mr. Krabs in, uh, SpongeBob. in SpongeBob. Yep. He's Clancy Brown does a he's lot also, of voice work. He's also really? the main prison guard in Hurricane as well. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. But wow. anyway, so yeah, I haven't seen him in yeah, yeah. anything but being. A and this is a great character. Like he he was born to play this character. So he's the There's black so knight. Many, he's got an awesome voice. Yeah, yeah he's the the, the real knight. tall, massive. The Kurgan. He's the black knight. Yeah, the Kurgan. It seems to me like he's not driven by mortality at this point. No, no, he's driven for ultimate power. He wants power. Yeah. Yeah. Which which, is, which makes him bad. Which, which makes they, him yeah. evil. <laughs> <laughs> which which oh, they yeah. do touch on they do touch on when he when he wins at the end and he gets mortality, he also can like read everybody's mind. Mm, and it's really right. like it's really lightly touched on, but he's like, I can hear everybody's thoughts. You know, all, he's basically all at like once kind of thing. Or something. Yeah, yeah. He's he like, could always he does... see Connery though, couldn't he? Yeah, he was kind of because like Connery a, was yeah. like, like an Obi Wan like style thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well but he, he, I guess that's the power. But it also comes with mortality, I yeah. guess. Like, okay. No, I find yeah. that, I find that I thought because towards the end I wasn't sure about that, and I thought that would be really good if 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 the at the end of all this they just become mortal. Mm-hmm. I thought that's good. I like See, that. that. And that's I the thing, this is what I like about it. So for a film that doesn't explain anything, we're asking a lot of questions that <laughs> yeah. we wished were explained. Yeah. But that's <laughs> so, good. No, but see, that's what, that's what yeah, I like no, in a film, yeah, you know? It means yeah, you can... Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of... Well, I mean, I, should we kind of go back towards the start? And... Well, let's go right back to the start because yeah. there's yeah. something kind of interesting. So the first guy he fights 
is uh, a guy whose uh, real name is Peter Diamond, and he's a stuntman, and he's been in millions of stuff as well. But his major claim to fame is that he was the stuntman or a stuntman in Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi. Oh, and um, nice. his his biggest claim to fame that we would all know is he's the sand uh, the sand person that comes and basically knocks out Luke. Though, <laughs> wow, awesome. that's him. Awesome. He's that awesome. guy. So that's kind of like that's his awesome character. That if you know if you've seen Star Wars a million times, you go, it's a sand person. Guy. Imagine yeah. that is your you know claim to fame you're that guy that what a that's awesome thing. that is a great yeah. character yeah. Yeah. yeah so he's in uh he's um he plays like five or six roles in star wars and probably about four in jedi and i think about six or seven or something in in empire so he, he's not the stormtrooper that smacks his head into he the is a stormtrooper he's oh. a, but then again i think they used everyone that they could yeah. to be a stormtrooper <laughs> so but he is a stormtrooper as well so i thought that was kind of interesting but there was also this bit in that scene where he meets that first guy and it's like the guy seems to hunt him down mm. and then want to run away. Yeah. By doing backflips. It was a lot of unnecessary like, yeah. backflipping going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird. I mean, yeah, strange. I heard and in- for two guys that have been around forever and been taught how to sword fight. But was he running away fight, though? Oh, worst sword you know fights what? in history. <laughs> was he running away though? He seemed to be. Yeah, he was. There were a couple of shots where he's dead set. Cutting. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I thought almost all of the sword fights were, were terrible. <laughs> yeah, like, for guys that Especially when worked. Connery's teaching him. Yeah. Like, just all this, like, the montage of him <laughs> learning to sword fight was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, look, this film is... It's it. It's How- one of those films where it, pretty much Connery and, um, and Clancy Brown are probably the two best actors in the entire film. Um, Connery, just because it's just Connery playing Connery. And um, and Clancy is just a really awesome bad guy, and, like, but he has the, he's also like the comic relief in the film yeah. as well. So there's lots of funny lines. So he rips the roof off the car and drags the guy out and jumps in the car, and the lady screaming. And he just turns around and goes, "Ma!" <laughs> he's got that. <laughs> <drives> <laughs> <off>. <laughs> he's kind of just got that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that laugh it's great. He was he was like this awesome uh, awesome bits. Um, so re- but, really quick one. Sorry, just to mm-hmm. uh, interrupt there. So this is one for Al, right? So just after that first sword fight. Our hero is driving away oh. in his car. Oh. 356 Porsche. I've and got it's the Porsche. Yeah, it's the yeah. same Porsche, is it? Yeah, from it's point the, right. oh. I've got this here. Hollywood's love affair with the Porsche 356. <laughs> yeah. Just awesome. obviously so in much months. better condition. It was in. Well, it's in, you know, it, we were talking about it. It was in Point Break. Uh, yep. It's Kelly McGuinness's car in Top Gun. Yep. It's The 356 convertible is used by Hollywood in so many films. Yeah. They have this love affair it's, with this car, it's which a, is really weird because other than in Highlander, where he's obviously a really, really rich guy, it's usually driven by people that have no money. Yeah. yeah. This is a car that's worth a fortune. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's a good point. like how you know? did Tyler get a three? Yeah, exactly. It would have had to have been left to her. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely had that. It's like, and that's going to be something I reckon we'll start to notice now. It's like, oh, three, five, six convertible. That's it. Um, I think uh, Gary Busey drives one in one of the forty-eight hours oh, or something he? like that. As really? Well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have to check um, that out. Well, so it's in uh, yeah something like that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely this love affair car. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. going going back to so fairly close to start, going back to this guy's power in terms of being immortal, and when we go back to back into the the, the Middle Ages, so back into the fifteenth century, or whatever it is. When they're so there's that big battle scene, yeah, and we're still getting to know this character, and it seems to me like even mortals can sense that he's immortal. Would that be a correct assessment? Because in the battle scene, no one is wanting to fight him. No, that's because the Kurgan Why? at the start of that battle says, "Leave McLeod for yeah. me." Oh, no, really? No, I, I can't touch him. Yeah. I clearly, I clearly wasn't. They, they were all McLeods. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. he, does, he says Leave Connor. Connor. Yeah, Connor. there's yeah. one named Connor. So he says that before the battle. Yeah, yeah. Because, okay. yeah, and then all the guys are like, go, oh, not you. Oh, well, I don't want to fight must you. Have, yeah, okay. Yeah, I must have missed that. He said, for, yeah, for leave some... Connor for me. And they went, yeah, no worries. Massive, huge dude. Blessed <laughs> yeah. him. With skulls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With skull and a huge sword. <laughs> you can have him. He's yours. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Hey, Kurgan. Yeah. <laughs> Timmy, if you miss that, you might have been off making a sandwich, were you? You know, maybe. Dude, I was in a library. There, were no, there was no way to make so, it. So, I, I would like to discuss the laws of immortality, right? And and I was kind of going along with an hour. Right? I know, <laughs> I know. We we're just gonna have to trump through this best we can. <clears throat> okay. Drowning seems fine. You can drown, but like, <sighs> <laughs> what is it? Is it a? Is it just that you heal? Like, I think it's a healing thing. Yeah. So, but if you drown, 
Like, there's lots of inconsistencies in this film, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it would probably, not go too look, deep. It would probably be... I would imagine drowning is similar to... Okay. You, if you're in the water and you're drowning, you might lose consciousness, right? Yeah. And you're down there. And you might not function again until you get brought back up. Hmm. No, well, when you when you drown, your lungs fill with water, and then your body what can't I'm saying, get oxygen. But what I'm saying is that if you're immortal and you come back up, your body then heals. Yeah, itself. but he doesn't. He yeah, goes to the bottom around. and he's like, "Hey, what's going <laughs> on?" And he, oh, he can actually because he, 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 he says laughs. he can breathe. He goes, actually, yeah, he? there's a bit I can breathe. Yeah, he, and then he, he says, says I can breathe. Chopping up seaweed with his sword. Yeah, uh, I was like, he starts uh, laughing. Hang on, what's the what laws are we working by here? And I don't think the the Hollywood whole healing laws. thing. I don't think it really uh, works the way like they're instantly healed because when a guy gets his head cut like a Pez dispenser. He's got the, he's the got clips the to hold. He's got the scar, but there's a scene. I think it's in the church scene. Yeah, he's, he's actually he's got, got safety pins. He's got yeah. safety pins. That's the yeah. one. He's got safety pins holding his head on. So, so kind of like. Eh. So maybe they're not human at all. Then maybe there's something else going on there. Mm. Mm, Highlander uh, two. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch Highlander two now. I can't well, remember. I'm that. not watching Highlander. Well, II. very briefly, is there some information in Highlander two that can help answer our questions? Yeah, but is it is the information something that ruins Highlander? Oh, I, the, look, it doesn't. It's just so. They take it in a completely different... Look, the short right. of it, the short of it, Highlander 2, they're all aliens. Right. Uh, right. Forget I said that. All right, so Let's that, go back to Highlander. We'll pretend there is no Highlander 2. But Just, I think if, if, we're gonna, if we're going to be discussing You've already the told intricacies me that of their immortality... Yeah. Look, I'm, I think the, that if we're going to get down to the inconsistencies of this film, I think the uh, immortality <laughs> bit is... The, uh, we're going to be here all least, night. Yeah, it's going to be the least of the thing. I think one uh, of the major inconsistencies, though, is they got Sean Connery, who's a Scotsman, to play a Spaniard uh, Egyptian, Egyptian and then they got a Frenchman to play a Scotsman what so <laughs> yeah. he has like the thickest Scottish accent of all of them oh, yeah, and he said you're Spanish he goes no I'm Egyptian no you're not no, you're not. doesn't look <laughs> Egyptian so, the, the, so apparently this was Christopher Lambert's second English, English film. speaking film after Greystoke where he said like two words anyway oh, yeah, Runs yeah. Didn't he? yeah. Mm. Um, he should have stuck with that so he, so he barely knew English anyway so he's He's doing a pretty good job. Like, I don't speak another language. Good on him. Uh, yeah. b- and apparently Sean Connery just went, fuck it. I'm just going to talk like this, like yeah. I do. I'm Sean Connery. And they all went, yes, Mr. Connery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's doing this film as a favour. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I really thought that was really weird. And then, uh, you know, when he gets uh, arrested after the first um, sword fight and then the guy sort of hangs shit on him. No. That cop that is cop like is oh, the worst. Don't yeah, move, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but there's like, look, that's another thing. When, let's not get down to the point of like, you know, great acting or really awesome one liners <laughs> in this film either. Because seriously, the the dialogue in this film is just atrocious. It's oh, pretty low. So <laughs> atrocious. Like, it, we're talking like, you know, Sharknado has better dialogue than this film. <laughs> but there's something about this film that, as terrible as everything is in it, there's something about it that's just awesome. Pretty- and I think it's the concept of the whole immortality and the sword fighting and this ancient thing, this sort of like half sort of fairy tale sort of thing that keeps it this this really cool sort of concept. Because it's, it's definitely not for, you know, script writing <laughs> or cinematography or anything like that. But there's something about Highlander that has always been this this great thing around goes, yeah, Highlander, there can be only one. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's that line. And it's like, there's something about this film that is spectacular and I don't but I don't know what it is is. but that's the thing though I've seen this film so many times and every single time at the end of it I go that was so bad but it was so (laughs) awesome watch it again (laughs) yeah exactly right I don't know what it is but there's something about it I don't know like maybe there's like some hidden stuff where they flash these things saying you will love this film you will love this film I don't know that that didn't work bro (laughs) (laughs) I really like the the comedy sprinkled all the way through it as well like uh, when he meets his his other immortal mate on the bridge, he's like, "When do we last see each other?" Oh, yeah. and he's oh, like, "Oh, that party!" <laughs> and there's that whole duel. The scene. duel scene is awesome. You know, it's great. It's bloody hilarious. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> Actually, there you go. There was another uh, reference to the past that we didn't touch on. Obviously, he was around for the yeah. I don't know, seventeen hundreds when were firearms invented. I don't know. This is the wrong know. podcast, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the date, you know. So I actually, my note is dual scene, funny as. <laughs> That's all I wrote. I, I tell you, going along with it, some of the other inconsistencies, or you know, just kind of things that make you scratch your head and go, "Why is the um, the forensic that?" So obviously, the main chick in the film, for the life of me, can't remember her character name or her real name. Um, 
I don't think but, that's really that important. No, I don't think anyone's name in the film is important. <laughs> so she's she's a forensic. Uh, she, yeah, she's a, you know, working for the police force in forensics. Why is she an expert in swords? She picks up that sword from underneath the car in the first fight scene, and she's like, "Oh, that's a a Dekio Mutaway." Toledo yeah, Salamanca. Salamanca. Thank you very much. Salamanca. Toledo. Do you have that Toledo written Salamanca? down? Uh, somewhere in here. <laughs> well played. Yeah. Uh, and she just knows exactly what it is straight away. Well, I'm because like, she, she writes that whole book on antique swords. Ah. Oh, she wrote... That's okay, that. I must have been having a sandwich during that. <laughs> <laughs> That's that massive book that he's got. And he Sla- gives it to Slaney and I didn't pay much attention. He goes <laughs> 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 like, oh, right. she's so on, 80s. She's on, the, <laughs> yeah. she's on the back, isn't she? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I might oh. have caught a glimpse of that. <laughs> Another Queen uh. song. Oh. <laughs> 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 That, that just put that in perspective for But me. also, how does she know what it is if it's the sword that doesn't exist? No, that's his Ooh. sword. That's Connor's sword. Yeah, the, the one that uh, that he gets off uh, Sean Connery's character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the sword name? she picks up is is Stuntman's sword. The Toledo Salamanca. Oh, oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, he's yeah, had his head cut off. But then she, gets, then she, then she finds... takes the, uh, the shards out of the, uh, out of yeah. the concrete pylon. Yeah. yeah. Of his sword. So there's always something that when I've watched this... And I think I said at the end of the the last podcast was that I've always like if I ever got the chance, this would be the film that I would remake, and I'd make sort of like you know the quickening scenes would be something That'd be spectacular. Gnarly. Yeah, and I said that yeah. just like the last scene where it's you know, all the ghosts and all the skulls and everything are flying around and everything. It's like all the quickening scenes would be that'd be rad. Would be something awesome. But I'd also do much more of a background on like the other guys and, and their stories. And would it hold up though today? Like do like yeah, in ter- I, yeah, I mean that's the thing because even if you like modernized it mm. and put all the effects in and even you know created better dialogue and that sort of thing the f- fundamentals of the film in terms of this immortality and you can only behead him and all sort of stuff would it hold up? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I the one thing it, I would do and the one thing I wouldn't change would I'd use the entire same soundtrack. Ooh. <laughs> that's a big goal. That's, that's, is a, a, that's a risk. That's... It is a, don't get me wrong. It is a fantastic soundtrack. It is great. And it, and it really, really adds to the film. <laughs> Believing the same soundtrack, I'm just not sure it would play. It just wouldn't fit. They, they're two very yeah. different monsters. Make it fit. Monsters. Make it fit. Make I think it fit. the only way you could really modernise it, like a film like that, I mean, it's sword fighting. I mean, you know, you take, you take it to Matrix action level, you know, like, jumping around rooms with swords and all that, that might pass off for today. But if it's two guys just having a sword... Well, if, if you look at... If so. you look I, don't, at I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take it down the Matrix level. No, no but, but, but that level of action is what I'm saying. As like, much as I'm good. shuddering to bring it up, you'd look at the sword play from the prequels, Star Wars prequels, mm. which was all yeah. you know, super fancy and, and great. Yeah, it was just what? wrapped in a tortilla of garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah it's a really cool action scenes. And yeah, it was just... And I uh, did same coming back to it like you know we were saying earlier that for, for guys that have been traveling the world for hundreds and hundreds of years and had fair bit of practice with swords they were <laughs> rubbish yeah. I reckon like some you know maybe like a 14 year old with a you know iron bar could probably give him a fair run how heavy are these swords though I mean these, are these broad swords uh, I mean they're uh, well the only one that uses like a proper big broad sword is uh, it's the Kurgan, it's Kurgan, it's the Kurgan. Yeah. everyone and- else has got very fancy you know lightweight and Almost not dress, not to mention that swords. you know Mr. Kurgan's sword is the ultimate '80s you know snap together yeah, yeah. tool is, in, a look, briefcase. <laughs> in a I, briefcase. Yeah. I know nothing about swords. Okay, but but is snap is the blade snap together? A, how does that work? And B, is that even feasible? Like, does that? Oh, uh, look, I think you could you could definitely construct something. It would it would be very very you know precision craftsmanship. I imagine it snapping together, but I don't imagine releasing it. If you know, locked you release it, it. Yeah. you would have to have some kind of releasing releasing mechanism inside the handle that then chain reaction. I think it's a terrible idea. I think you're just better off having a, uh, you know, just a freaking sword, man. Just mm. don't connect the shit together. But that's that's very eighties. Well, he's style. like you know, he's, connect together. He's made out to be like seven foot tall, and everyone else seems to be able to conceal their swords in trench coats yeah. and walk around. Like, yeah. he? he can just put it in his pocket, just you know? carry it around like blade, just in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because he could just he could just go anywhere, or like in Kill Bill, he can take it on a plane. Just oh, it's yeah. like a samurai holder <laughs> next to the ashtray. Yeah. God, that was great. That was great. I really I liked the how Highlander and the Kurgan were like. I liked how we went back and forth between times to show their battle. Yeah, to show the like times. their relationship. Yeah, like it, yeah. and just how nothing has really changed over like four hundred years. Yeah, it's just but. 
Like one scene that I found a bit, and, and again, I might have missed something briefly. I might have looked around and missed it. The bit where the Kurgan fights. What was Connery's character? Is that Angus? No. No, no it's really long. Ramirez. Ramirez, yeah. San- right. Something okay. Sanchez Lobo. Yeah, it was like four Lobo names or something, wasn't it? Yeah, so Ramirez. pretty Spanish name. So for he's an fighting <laughs> him in Highlander's castle, and because he's having dinner with, um, with his girlfriend. With his girlfriend. Where was Highlander during? All yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, See I'll the thing that because because I wrote down. Like, because they're fighting, the castle is getting destroyed. So yeah. even if he's in the shed tinkering with something, he's going to notice <laughs> gonna go, that shit's going down. There's lightning. And, yeah, like, so y- there was a few bits where I'm like, because there's a few bits where I'm like, this whole thing could have been over <laughs> before it even started because mm-hmm. there were times when they should have fought, but they just decided not to. Like, when they're in the church, I thought the church scene was awesome. No, yeah. because but, they they said that right at the start. They yeah. can't fight on holy ground. Yeah. The, yes, but Highlander says, I'm going to go outside. and wait outside. And he's like, I'll catch up with you eventually or something. I'll see you again. And yeah. It's like, he's going outside, He's going to be outside, <laughs> he's, You'll open the door and he's there. Go ahead and cut his head off. <laughs> <laughs> cut his head off and finish it. I've got... I've got, I've got, I've got to go pick my car up. <laughs> yeah. Cut his head off already. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Did I just scream that in the middle of the library? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Cut his head off. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. Like, that was a bit where I'm like, do, do we want this to be over or do we want this to continue going? Well, like, that's the director's I, going, I, I made a note. We've still got an hour to go. <laughs> Keep going. Don't it's kill a, him yet. Stretch. <laughs> it's a long film, yeah. Like, is it? It's a long. I, I don't it's know. Not, maybe it, it was felt long. Maybe ju- just short of two hours. Okay, guess. so it's, it's not a, that long. It's, it's but, long enough. Like I wrote, the progression of this film is very slow. Like. It just seems like it takes forever to get anywhere in this film. Like, but I think that's to do with Lamb. Like, it's the acting kind of slows it right down. Yeah, let's like, let's not justify it as acting. Right? Like, it's just it blank faces better. for two hours, yeah, and you're yeah. just like. Random. But I mean, like with the church scene, you know, like they could have stepped outside. After, straight after that church scene and had the epic battle. I like that, that scene good though. That, that church scene. The church cool. scene's great it really because good. it was super uncomfortable. Yeah, and it was. I don't know, it's just well done. Like, it was the first time where I thought that Kurgan was, like, a really cool character. Like, yeah, he just... Good. I'm just like, this dude's yeah. fucked up. Like, he's, what's he... He's, that scene made you feel like he's not just, like, blunt force trauma. Yeah. He's, you know, he's been around for 400 years as well. He's yeah. a pretty smart guy. Yeah. A little bit insane. Yeah. Well, well it's just... almost like the time has gotten to him and he's just like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like, like he comes in cares? and he's, he's putting out a candle to his hand, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> But... Um, <laughs> Brad loves this film. Oh man, <laughs> great! I love it. It's awesome. It's been... <laughs> but I, yeah, I enjoyed watching. Even though there wasn't a whole lot of actual progression in their relationship, I thought the going, the toing and froing from the times was good in terms of yeah. establishing. It was their... cut really nicely. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Because it's like, oh, sweet, we're back, and we you know we're finding out a bit more about this character here, and then we're going back to. The, you know the present or whatever and and seeing what happens and then going back to figure out another bit of this character and so I thought that worked pretty well getting back to your thing though where like you know there, there seems to be so many times where Kirk could have killed Connor and mm. he's like uh not right now yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly I've got to get my cars pick my, pick <laughs> it's like, my it's car like a, no, but it's, <laughs> gotta go get my washing or something it's the, <laughs> it's the Joker Batman relationship the Joker needs to kill Batman a certain way to appease himself Mm. He needs to. He can't just walk up to Batman and shoot him in the face. He's got to do it in a way that is mm-hmm. epic and smart. And well, there's also the thing of if we're you know if we're going down the Joker Batman path, we're always going to go down. That there's path. also <laughs> the thing of like they they don't actually. Well, Joker doesn't actually want to kill Batman. You know, oh, and, they, and they touch on that in in Dark Knight. He as wants well, it to go actually. on forever. He's, he's like, he's, what what do I do without? You know, like this is a relationship that we need to have, and there are a lot of incarnations where. <laughs> The Joker's like quite androgynous and like effectively in love with Batman, mm. but because of his insanity, you know, like yeah, mm. yeah. So, so maybe there's a bit of that, like that that bit of insanity over all this time, because immortality's got to play with your mind. Like, is it to the point where he's like, well, once I kill him, I actually what, what next? You know, like, I actually feel like it's like uh, a confidence. He's mm. like, I'm going to win. I'm just gonna play it out. So I'm just gonna like stretch I'm, it out, and I'm gonna choose. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, pro- yeah. I'm just gonna prod the bear for the next, you know, yeah. 300 years. And- <laughs> yeah, it's like I'll keep pulling at the fly's wings, 
And, and it's and it's know. only re- when you think about it, it's only really when Highlander turns around and actually goes, okay, I'm I got I'm going to kill this guy because mm. it seems to me like Highlander's just defending himself most of the time. Yeah, like mm. people are attacking him and he's just he's killing them. He's literally just waving his hand around. Like but he never he, <laughs> like he's not he's not actively seeking out this Kurgan guy. He's not no. he's not actively going after him. He doesn't like he's not invested in this in this. There can only be one yeah. scenario. So it's only really when he decides, okay, I've got to show, I've got to show down with this bloke, and then. Well, and that's evident. That's evident in his uh, early relationship with his wife, his first wife. What was her name? Helen, Heather, 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 Heather. Got it. Worst old age makeup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ever. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but you know, like he, he's always like right from then. He'd always wanted like a life. Like a like yeah, someone to settle down with yeah. Uh, yeah, and so you're right. He's just been like, like he's effectively been running and hiding. Yeah, since since then, which is probably why he's been living in the Highlands. I mean, no, that's just where school. he was. School, like born. Mm. <laughs> like, he's born. been living in New York, in Brooklyn, actually. Huh? <laughs> I I tell you, man, like New York back in the eighties doesn't look like a nice place to it's live. Not. I like was watching this movie. I, I made a note of it. I was like, "Man, America in the eighties looks fucked." Oh it was God. like it was right up. New York was really nasty for a really long time. Like yeah. you didn't want to be in Times Square in like the early nineties. Maybe like, really it was yeah. It was all when, full of like porn theaters and oh wow yeah yeah for a really long time. Like that only you know sort of recently I guess cleared yeah. it up. So look, I someone though, in uh, in eighties in the eighties especially in the states you know they were still living under that whole Cold War thing. You know, the mm. Rus- ah, yeah, the Ruskies were just over there with bombs pointing at them and and you know and if they finished off the Ruskies then there was the the Chinese and the North Koreans and you know, so yeah so it's an interesting time especially this like you know Reaganism era as well so now, going back to the Kurgan guy the the other thing that I liked about him was that we didn't see a whole lot of him really mm. when you think of the context of the film. He appears occasionally, but he he's not in it a whole lot. Like we're not mm. really seeing him unless he's there trying to get Highlander. So yeah, there are a couple of scenes where he's like in the hotel and stuff. Mm. But but the majority of it is like he appears occasionally. It's like oh yeah, there's this guy. Like he's the overarching guy that's trying to end all this. Yeah, which I actually thought made his appearances more powerful that way because. We weren't getting saturated with him, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff's going down every time he turns up. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Turns up, oh, someone's going to die. Yeah. I, can I tell you a bit I found quite uncomfortable? <laughs> Once again, we only have an hour. I, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm going to do one after you. I, you go. I've got something really disturbing. So when, when I, well, we, we can't remember her name, but when he brings the, the forensics lady mm. back to his house... And shows her his special, like, time room. Mm. You know, of all, this is all the stuff that I've collected, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm a mortal. And he gets the knife and, you know, gets her to stab him. Mm. And that, like, sets her off. That she's turns like, Ooh, her yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> stab a bloke. <laughs> you know? Kissy, kissy. Dude. Like, oh. Yeah. And it was, I was just like, whoa, hang yeah. on a minute. That's, that's. I literally wrote down, "I'm a mortal. Let's fuck." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And then, it, and then I, it rolls into like a classic '80s oh, sex oh, scene. Yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, hang on, did someone change the channel? Am I watching Top Gun? <laughs> like it was. <laughs> it's very, very classic '80s. Because I didn't find their relationship was not convincing whatsoever. No, like no. I was. I was much more on on board with Heather. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, back in the Highlands, because they they generally seemed like to be fully happy with each other. Whereas yeah, that's these right. Two just seemed really weird around each other, like mm. just awkward, <laughs> just awkward. And he had he had Obi Wan in his ear too, going, <laughs> "Leave her alone, yeah. don't touch her." <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, you were talking about the car scene with mm. the Kurgan before. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I was watching that. I'm like, it's a really intense scene. Like. Like it's Ma. like it was, yeah. Like it starts quite funny like that, but that whole sequence where he's driving against traffic, and he's like, you know, it's like played quite funny. You know, he's like covering his eyes and. Ooh, and no, that's a know. later scene. That's where he's got the the forensics girl in the car. Yeah. Oh, it is her. too. He's driving her to the to the sign. Where he that's right. Her, that's which right. Which he somehow manages to get free of after it falls over. 
but it's su- it's super intense. Like it's she screams pretty hard. Yeah, yeah she's it's a good like, screamer. I think yeah. that would have been one of the things. Like scream for me. Mm, yeah, you got the job. Yeah, good screamer. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I really like the camera work in general. Like there were a lot of really like massive sweeping. Yeah, crane that, shots like right from the scene. start yeah, oh yeah scene. but then epic but all in that battle at the end there are all these like massive tracking like mm. dolly shots of mm-hmm. just you know and all that backlit you know it was mm. it's almost like you, I wouldn't be surprised if in some sentence somewhere Quentin Tarantino went oh yeah that Kill Bill scene Kill Bill. that's mm. exactly what I was going to yeah, say it came like, from Highlander like, it's well from the it. thing that made that really good is the music stops too yeah there's no music no for music. that bit yeah so you're like this is hap- this is the whole film has been a build up yeah now it's happening this and it was the, the first same. like fight scene where it was just like bang it's just the fighters there's nothing yeah. you know, there's yeah. nothing else going on most of those fight scenes are all like backlit yeah, and they look really good. Like mm. apart from the garbage sword fighting, <laughs> which is a shame. Like because they look, it is a shame. they look really good. Like they're shot yeah. really nicely, so and the, the lighting is stunning. Is that whole? I tell you what's weird. Just going back a little bit, is that whole uh, scene with uh, the other bloke, the other mate, and the the dude in like the Trans Am rocks up. Oh, yeah. With all the guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. The- yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, f- fills him full of lead, and then he gets, imp- like, totally impaled Impi- and lifted oh. up, but he survives. Mm-hmm. And then the Kurgan takes, like, the rubbish old old lady's car. Mm-hmm. Inst- not the one full of guns. <laughs> not, <laughs> one full of, not the, tr- the red trans air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A bit random. <laughs> that, 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 that scene was just weird, too. It seemed like, like, even... I know this Kurgan is, like, you know, he's... You know, and they say at the start, you know, he is the strongest, he's the most skillful and stuff. But they are, that scene's probably seems like, well, I suppose it's the only other time we see him fight anyone else. But it, once again, it just seemed all a bit too easy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like, how, how have these other guys been around for so long if you can kill them this easy? And how many were there? Well, oh yeah, maybe he's been real busy killing all the other guys. That's a good mm. point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's been too busy killing. Too busy killing. He's been he chopping off finally heads. getting around. He's just so the, walking down the street chopping heads. You know, the, the, is it the gathering? So the gathering is what they're all drawn to. They're drawn to yeah. for the final showdown, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So I'm just trying to think. Well, how would how would they even know when they're the last one? But I suppose that's the whole point of the gathering is that that's the drawing power to get them all in the same place, which is why they're all coming to New York. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And it was just I, very convenient mm-hmm. that Connor lived there. Yeah, so, Nash. I just I was For him anyway. I was just bothered by the fact that a lot of them were mates. Yeah, and you know, like, well, I was surprised that because we haven't spoken much about Sean Connery, that he trains him up, like just kill him, just kill him, and then <laughs> yeah. he's done. Like this guy can't sword fight. Kill yeah, him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one less. There can only be one. Yeah, <laughs> like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, it's just, and he makes reference to that at some point, Christopher Lambert. Says, <laughs> says, uh, <laughs> what if it's down to you and me? And I don't remember. Uh, he doesn't he give doesn't a response. Answer. He doesn't, he doesn't really answer. I think yeah. he just like smiles at him or something. Yeah, because he's like, he's yeah, I'll cut your fucking head off. I'll cut you down. Yeah. Yeah. I have plans for that. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut you. I'll cut you. Maybe that's why that montage is so rubbish. Is that he's actually just teaching him to be a shit sword fighter? <laughs> <laughs> when he eventually has to meet him uh-huh. in the end. Well, you know what I reckon would have been really cool. Like, I reckon it would have been way better if Sean Connery is like, you know, hey, I want to have this epic sword fight with this guy, but this guy sucks. So he trains him up through the whole montage so he can have an epic sword fight with him. Like instead of getting killed by the Kurgan, is that his name? Kurgan. Yeah. Uh, you know, Connor and. Sean Connery, whatever his name is, ha- they actually have a Ramirez. fight. Ramirez. Ramirez, thank you. But like the only reason that Sean Connery is, is, is training him up is so that they can have a good sword fight. But maybe this comes you know? back to the whole Batman Joker thing, man. We don't just want to kill someone. We don't want to... Yeah, we train we them want up. It to, we want it to be epic. Yeah. I don't know. So like, that, I reckon that, I was watching it and going, yes, these two are going to throw down. It's going to be friggin' awesome. And it was shit. And it, I think... I feel like potentially in a remake, mm-hmm. right, that you were talking about earlier... You could almost have like a false lead, like a false bad guy of the Kurgan who actually gets killed sort of at the end of the second act and it does actually come down to these two friends mm. 
who are really close and like actually we now have to fight. Yeah. You know, Kirk versus Spock. Bruce Wayne, really Rachel awesome. Gould. Come on, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that's all I thought about with Sean Connery. I'm thinking, this is nothing like bloody Rachel Gould and, 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 <laughs> and Bruce Wayne on the frozen pond. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. That's it, Wall. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so it's clearly been done since because mm. we've just rattled off two examples. But, you well, know, it could the, be a the good. The brothers in Warrior. I, look, I don't really have a whole lot left to say about no, this film, to be perfectly no, honest with no. you. I mean, I mean, look, it was entertaining. I'm never going to watch it again. I'm just, I'm letting you, I'm letting <laughs> I'll you know right now. I'll correctly tell you now. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. Do we want to kind of get into our, to our ratings now? Or do we want to talk a bit more about towards the end? We haven't really, I don't know. Do we want to speak more about the final battle type? On, on the effects, you know, being very of the time, I feel like I saw every wire that was holding everything up. Oh, yeah. In that, yeah, like, yeah, there were yeah. wires pulling the sign down. There mm-hmm. were wires... And the and the all the animated ghouls and stuff and the lightning was specifically done to hide the wires. Yeah. Huh. But you could still a lot it. of people have said, yeah, that it actually highlights the wires <laughs> more. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, you know, like, it, I don't feel like that took me out of the film as much, but... Well, it took you back to what we kind of were just used to. It was like... There's you plenty know, of 80s films that have got special effects and it's like, yeah. It's, it's I didn't like, really, yeah. you know... I, most maker. of the old Superman films were... Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really notice it a whole lot though. I mean, maybe it's just something that you look... I mean, you would look out for it a lot more now mm. anyway. You were also watching it on a laptop in a library. I was. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I was. <laughs> I think the copy but, I watched was pretty crummy as well. I didn't notice it. I watched it on my iPad last night, if that okay. helps. <laughs> but I'd seen it before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually pretty impressed by the graphics. <laughs> Timmy's had enough. <laughs> He's over there, just like, oh, I'm done, man. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> Why yeah. I, the, the graphics were pretty good. Like, I, I mean, the whole movie, I was like, you know, whatever effects they had, I was like, man, it's all right. But the graphics at the end, when uh, when all the ghosts and ghouls and shit were flying around, I was actually pretty impressed by that. I was you, like, yeah, for the time, that's yeah. not too bad. And look, I actually sat there and said, look, transport yourself back, Tim. Yes. Transport yourself back to 986. How would this look? And I'd be like, you know, this would be pretty fucking Yeah, you can't and judge also, by today's uh, standard. Go back to 1986 and pretend that you're like seven. <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild oh movie God. for a seven-year-old, you know? Like It is. Like, that, that battle scene at the start, like yeah, right at the start. There are guys getting their throats cut. It's really like, full yeah. on. Like, there are dudes getting drowned and yeah, like, yeah. it's... It's pretty brutal. It is. That's what we did in the eighties, man. <laughs> Drown your mates and cut their throats. Yeah, absolutely. In the fourteen eighties. Joke of the podcast. <laughs> well, should we do some ratings? Yeah, look, we're, we're, I was yeah. just gonna just one last oh. thing was uh, the the link between um, the last film we did of Speed and this one was that you know the bad guy dies. By losing his head. Oh, oh nicely. Oh, like that. If he says, "What happened to him? He lost his head." <laughs> yeah, well played. Yeah, yeah. So a good link there. Yeah, good. Nicely. That's about as much uh, as we can link those two films together. <laughs> that and they were both probably terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, all right. Well, ratings. Look, ratings. It's it's okay. So we'll, we'll start with. Well, let's start with sandwiches. Um, Brad, did you... Oh, I'm no sandwiches you didn't, on this one. You didn't no, get no, a sandwich. No, no, no. no. Okay. I am glued to the seat, start to finish. Mm. This is me. Al. I, I did not make sandwiches in this film either. I was I was still on board. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, look, I didn't have capacity to make a sandwich where I was. <laughs> However, look, I... look. <laughs> there was tea I mean, and coffee available. <laughs> look, I... I considered pausing it a few times and thinking oh look I'll pause it here and I'll come back to it later and I thought you know what Tim you, you might not come back to this <laughs> so look I probably would have made a few sandwiches I've, I might, I've made, made maybe two or three sandwiches I'll, I'll say that well I'm gonna go way over there in the deep end here I'm gonna give this like nine sandwiches <laughs> whoa <laughs> nine sandwiches. <laughs> let me explain wow. let me explain give right. the film a chance let me explain <laughs> right so first off I you know I've never seen the film I had you know I'm going back to the 80s and I go yeah okay so I, I need to put myself there but even then like I'm not into the whole broadsword kind of you know like um, uh, what's that you know Game of Thrones style um, you know action I'm just I've got issues with crummy New York I, maybe I have a bad anchor around it from other movies or something but just but it, I just found myself like 
you know, not even halfway through the film and I was browsing YouTube on my laptop while watching the movie and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, oh, geez, I'm supposed to be writing notes for a podcast. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's it. That's official. I'm making sandwiches. And I just... The only reason I didn't give it 10 sandwiches is because of the duel scene. The duel scene made me laugh my ass <laughs> off. But other than that, the whole movie it was just a pain to sit through as far as I'm concerned. I hope I don't offend anyone here. Hey. It's just not my kind of film. Would it be fair to say that 10 sandwiches is the most amount of sandwiches it, you can make is. in a film? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm struggling you... to believe you even watched any of the film. <laughs> You're just in the kitchen making <laughs> sandwiches. Making sandwiches. There's, there's a reason I haven't been talking a whole lot during this podcast. <laughs> is because there's a lot of scenes that you guys are talking about. And You've I'm been like, eating sandwiches, I dude. <laughs> I don't remember that bit, you know? Like, yeah, I don't remember that bit. For those at home, let me just remind how the sandwich rating works. If, if I was going to spend 100% of the film not watching it, if I if I thought 100% of the film I would prefer making sandwiches I would give it 10 well, sandwiches essentially what it means is if you're sitting there watching it and you suddenly think to yourself you know what I might just get up and make a quick I'm sandwich yeah <laughs> and not press and you force. get up it means that you're not really into the film and you're just kind of you just you, you, your stomach's talking for you yeah. basically so it kind of, it's an indication that the film is not really doing it for you and not at you all. might want to get up and do other stuff so if I was making nine sandwiches most of that film I wouldn't be around for so, <laughs> so it well, seems like you weren't well if we, if we if we go to perhaps a little bit more of a positive scale if we're looking at the San Dimas scale how does the San Dimas scale work no I went first last time how does it work Al <laughs> oh, that's what I'm work. asking you <laughs> Jesus the San Dimas scale for if you've just joined us, uh, we re- rate everything on a percentage scale compared to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So we give Bill and Ted's 100%. So we might give a film that's not quite as good a lower percentage. We might give a film that's better than Bill and Ted's, believe it, it's possible, a higher percentage. Excellent. Brad, what would you give it as a, on the Sand M scale, mate? Well, it's no Bill and Ted's. Um, I think we can all agree to that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I must say that uh, there's better sword fighting in Bill and Ted's <laughs> in the bit where they're dressed as the knights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there's way better, way, way better. Uh, yeah, You're sword not my fighting. father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even the Genghis Khan guy in the uh, in the sports store with the oh, baseball, with the baseball bat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably better sword fighting than the anything. Genghis Khan guy. Yeah. You mean Genghis, Genghis Khan? Khan. <laughs> well, yeah. You know they didn't actually get a time machine and go back and get him. You know it was an actor. <laughs> Uh, okay, sorry. So, <laughs> spoiler alert there. Yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, it's definitely no uh, no Bill and Ted. So I'm going to go to 85 because it's, I think for me, just, yeah, seeing this when I was a kid, I just wanted to be the Highlander. It's a slice of your life, isn't it? I can it tell. Is. Look at the glimmer yeah, in your yeah, eye. Yeah, it's yeah. I love this film. There can be only one. <laughs> and unfortunately, there was more than one Highlander. Ooh. Um, it was so, three. And there was a series. There was a TV series. And that was probably the worst thing I've ever seen. I remember okay. when that was on. Yeah, that was shocking. Oh, really, right. really, really bad. Um, but I'll be, yeah, I'll so be sure gonna... to watch that one. Yeah, 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 things to it. avoid. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my score. Uh, okay, so on the stand name scale, I'd probably, yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd give it... <laughs> I'd be surprised if you... You I'm can't thinking, give it over thinking, 10. No, I'm, th- I'm thinking 10%. I gave it nine sandwiches. I'm, I'm going to give it 10% of Bill and Ted's. <laughs> purely because... Of you for two sandwiches, reasons. two <laughs> two reasons: the dual scene and the fact that we get to do a podcast about it. That's the only reason I watched it. Other than that, I've never, never watched to you it. again. I've never I'm watched literally it. never talking to you again. I never would have watched it. Yeah, so ten ten percent on the San Diego scale. You know, I look. I may never have watched it either. I don't know. Like uh, when you when you mentioned it in the last podcast, I'm like, well. All right, I'll give it a go. And I, I thought, oh yeah, I'd forgotten about Highlander. I forgot it totally existed. So look, I get, look, I'd probably give it in the forties. I reckon I'd probably give it maybe a, maybe a forty-four or something like that. I wouldn't give it over fifty because I wouldn't watch it again. And I don't feel like if I'm not going to watch it again, I'm not going to give it over fifty. So and I did make a few sandwiches in there, so I'm, no, leave it at that. Seems fair. I, I'm sitting around the solid high sixties, like sixty-eight, sixty-nine. A lot of that is coming from the soundtrack. Because it is like, and in fact, a lot of it's coming from that opening sequence. Well, the soundtrack is Al, fantastic. It's a kind of magic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe sixty-eight. I reckon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can can we maybe bump it up one just for the sixty-nine? <laughs> Jesus. I think most of my forty-four could have been to do with what Sean Connery was wearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spectacular, quite frankly. Yeah, absolutely, that was probably a movie in itself. I could have just—I could have watched him just walk around in that outfit. 
for you know 100 oh. what, what is it an hour and 57 minutes i reckon oh I could, man yeah. you can see though that it was like there was time off from making a bond film at the time and he owed some guy you <laughs> big know, favor yeah or he went oh, i had a week off these yeah. guys are going to pay me a hell of a lot of cash yeah. i'm in scotland so <laughs> yeah, uh, Margaret, let's do a movie so i'm just going to pass you over to paul here from our uh, wardrobe department paul do you want to just and he just run the directors runs <laughs> Mr. Connery, yeah, no, Mr. Con- um, we have your so- earring. <laughs> <laughs> and these these are the oh, eyebrows that you'll be wearing. <laughs> and here, here are your peacock feathers. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, shit. You know what? It's almost getting up to 50% right now. <laughs> <laughs> the memories of Connery are just making it... Oh. Awesome. We're the most unbelievable <laughs> Egyptian Spaniard in the world. Yeah. Yeah, great. Oh. <laughs> and that was it. And, and him playing an Egyptian Spaniard wasn't the most unbelievable part of that film. <laughs> <laughs> I still love it though. I still love yeah. it. It's, it's just a classic and it always will be. Oh, jeez. Uh, I want to dip back into my, uh, my favourite segment of the podcast. What I like to call it podcasting a wider net. I love how satisfied you are with that title. So satisfied. <laughs> you want me to say it again? Podcasting a wider net. See how it works. Ah. I'm going to keep it pretty brief because oh, I got. Is, is this a segment where you just talk about other podcasts? Yeah. So basically, podcasts aren't a new thing. We're not the first people to do this. I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware no. of this, Tim. That that is true. That is. There true. are also a lot of people out there who are much better at it than us. No. So I just. No. no that, I, know, yeah, that, I, totally, I know. I don't believe. That, I know. No. So I just. I just feel we owe it to our audience to just let them aware let them be aware of what else is out there i found a couple of great ones on highlander <laughs> do they all come up with pretty much the same result as us i didn't li- i didn't get through all of them to be honest how <laughs> <laughs> <And> many sandwiches <laughs> I, I had a lot of sandwiches while listening to these podcasts the first one uh i got in touch with my inner bogan and discovered uh merrick watts mm-hmm. on who who does the drive program on triple m here you know, does, does he? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. Don't get me started. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Merrick does a few movie reviews, and they're all of old films: Highlander, Ghostbusters. Mm. Anyway, they're pretty funny. They're they're really short. He's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Get onto it. Mm. I I would recommend that podcast. I found another one called Chicks with Flicks, Ooh. and it's and it's five women. None of them had seen Highlander before. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I am listening Bo- to that. Boy, yeah. were they in for a surprise. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> My understanding of the early part of the show was they were looking forward to seeing Sean Connery. Okay. That was... And, and having... <laughs> Boy, were they in for a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> having spoken to my mum today, you know, she said, oh, Sean Connery's in that, right? It's clearly a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this little gem I found, this podcast is called... Highlander rewatched. Okay. Okay. This entire podcast is the. I think there are four blokes, and the whole podcast is on Highlander. Right. The series, the movies. <coughs> the first Highlander movie is broken into three episodes. So that's three Whoa. hours. Wow. Of Whoa. Highlander discussion. Wow. Okey doke. So get it. We in were India. struggling with one hour, and there's <laughs> four of us. It's called Highlander rewatched. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's some dedication. Oh, and it's also episode 24. So there are 23 other episodes <laughs> of Highlander, oh of Highlander talk oh before God. they got to this movie. Wow. Whoa. Jeez. Good on them. And H- how? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I didn't listen to the whole show. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so, well, well done, people that did the doll then. The, that, the Highlander rewatch. That's dedication right there. That is a podcasting a wider net for this week. Fantastic. Good work, <laughs> And I believe that brings us to the end That's a wrap. of another fantastic week in the library uh, of the San Dimas School of Film. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Oh, what's, what are we, what are yeah, we before we go, oh, we're going to the film. Ooh, that means it's Tim's turn. We're, back to we're looking at Timmy. We've done a full circle. Yeah. A bit I'm, I'm excited for this. No, I'm, I'm really excited he's, for this. Well, he's angry after after that one. So I don't know. No, I'm, I'm taking a bit of a different direction actually. That's what I'm worried about. It seems like we've we've had a very action kind of focus <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> start to this late '80s, early '90s. Don't give me that look, Brad. <laughs> uh, it's a 2009 film. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and you I'll probably give it away straight away for you, but Kevin Spacey. Oh, Sam nice. Rockwell nice we're going to be watching Moon next yeah. oh yeah. do you know what oh 
I am so. This is one of my favorite films, oh, Moon, really? and I. This was on my list. There we go. To pick. Awesome. It was really hard to watch. So it's a good movie. So I'd just like to say that just because of your wrap up of Highlander, I'm going to purposely try and hate this film. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I wasn't I wasn't out making sandwiches the whole time, so you can go easy on me. <laughs> oh, righteous. Wait, wait so until Slaney chooses a film. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> great. It well, better, that better not be good. That officially brings us to the end of the Sandema School of Film for this week. Thanks for joining us. And our email, if you want to talk to us, is... Sandemasfilm at gmail.com And you can stalk us on Facebook at Sandema School of Film. Come and tell us some stuff, movies you might want to see. Yeah, suggest some movies, why not? And we'll, you know, we might ignore you. Or we might just be really <laughs> excited that you got in touch with us. Because yeah, not many people do. Because... <laughs> Yeah, let's face it. It's because mum's getting sick of having to watch these random films. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>